Hey everybody, Dr. Brett Schur, Low Carb Cardiologist at LowCarbCardiologist.com. I'm about to head off to the airport to go to Denver for Low Carb Denver. I've got my warm coat on, San Diego boy, i got to bundle up. My talk at Low Carb Denver is going to be about the cholesterol guidelines, um, which focuses mostly on LDL. But it made me realize that HDL gets, gets the short shift. HDL gets, uh, gets neglected more than it should. So I recently wrote a blog article about it. But for those who don't like to read and like videos, I wanted to do a quick video just to kind of summarize um, what I think the key points on, are up for HDL. And, and one is, look, if it's low, it's a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Doesn't mean it causes it, but it's certainly a risk factor. And it can be low in diabetes and insulin resistance, and that certainly could be part of it. It does have a function of reverse cholesterol transport. Part of its function is it can go into the endothelial wall, take cholesterol out, and then recycle it, either bring it to the liver or it can bring it to another LDL, but it can take it out of the vessel wall. So it's got a beneficial effect, and it can be lowered in other deleterious diseases. So a low HDL is a concern, but a high HDL of late has come into to the news as saying maybe it's not so protective. And there I think the key is, how does it get high? Why is it high? Clearly, if we elevate it with drugs, it does no good. The CTEP inhibitors, even niacin, raising HDL does not seem to have a significant clinical benefit. So you don't want to raise it by drugs. What if it's genetically elevated? Well, if it's genetically elevated, some of those people are going to have dysfunctional HDL. All right, so you might have a high number of a high amount of cholesterol in your HDL particles, but they may not be as functional. So they may not be able to do the reverse cholesterol transport and recycle the cholesterol, take it out of the vessel walls as well. But here's the caveat: if you have, you know, quote unquote, normal HDL or middle of the road HDL, and you elevate it with lifestyle. That's where I personally believe it is most beneficial. Now, we don't have any studies to prove that, but we don't have any studies to prove it opposite either. And that's where it shows your lifestyle is reversing any disease or condition that would lower HDL. And I would suggest it's going to be the more functional HDL because your HDL particles tend to go up in addition to the HDL cholesterol number. And we know it's not because of some genetic mutation that's going to make your HDL dysfunctional. So for me, the goal of HDL is to make sure it's not low and to make sure you're using lifestyle to elevate it. What's the best lifestyle? Well, if you read the books, the textbooks, they're going to say um, exercise and alcohol. But those have a small benefit. Alcohol, very small benefit. And I can also raise your triglycerides and worsen insulin resistance. So I don't necessarily encourage that. Exercise, absolutely encouraged for, for everybody. Um, and that can have a small to moderate effect, but low carb, high fat nutrition is the best lifestyle intervention I've ever seen for raising HDL. So if you want to learn more, um, I have a blog on my website. I also have my lipids course on my website that goes through in more detail HDL and, and all about lipids for that matter. All right, I'm off to Denver. Hopefully I'll see a lot of you there. Uh, if not, hopefully you can catch the talk um, on YouTube or somewhere where it might be posted. Have a great day.